Hey everyone, it's Kai from Cool Collectibles, back again for another review. This time it's the Bandai Soul of Jigokan GX88 Dairaga 15, otherwise known as Vehicle Force Voltron. For all the amazing figures coming out of Japan, click the link in the description below to head on over to Big Bad Toy Store. They ship worldwide, so definitely check them out. Alright, about six years ago, in late 2013, a uh, company called Miracle Productions uh, managed to somehow release a Vehicle Force Voltron um, and uh, you can click that little card above to go to that original review that I did um, and for its time it was pretty good um, but then uh, Bandai maybe three years ago now released GX71 a uh, Lion Force Voltron and as soon as they announced that I was praying for them to also do this so it's taken them about three years to finally release the Dairaga 15 uh, from the original classic Japanese anime um, that uh, I guess the US companies took to uh, reformat into the Vehicle Force Voltron cartoon that I grew up watching on Australian TV. Uh, but uh, this figure, for the most part, is uh, pretty damn fantastic. I haven't yet really compared it against the uh, Lion Force Voltron, uh, but we'll get to that shortly. But uh, I'll quickly go through the box art. Uh, because I got this from the uh, US uh, through Big Bad Toy Store, uh, it does come with this... Um, outer sleeve, which I don't think comes with the Japanese releases. I tried to get it from Japan first, um, and it sold out within uh, the first couple of hours that I tried to get it from Amiyami and Nippon Yasin and I think Hobby Link Japan. So it sold out pretty damn quickly on the first day of release. Um, and luckily, Big Bad Toy Store sent out an email to everyone uh, saying that they were going to announce the pre-order. Um, and uh, obviously a lot of people stayed up and waited for that pre-order because as soon as it went live, uh, the Big Bad Toy Store website pretty much crashed. Um, and so it, uh, it was about uh, 30 minutes of uh, constant refreshing for uh, a lot of people. Um, and I managed to get the original pre-order in uh, for the original pre-order price for about uh, 320, 330, I think it was, US. Um, I think the price has gone up a little bit now on all the retail sites. Uh, due to the popularity and the, uh, I guess, the limited nature of it. But uh, definitely glad I managed to get it. Uh, this outer sleeve has that really nice cover art there. I do love the, the style of this damn thing. Uh, it's got uh, all of the photos and so on are the same as on the Japanese box, um, except the front cover there. So you get the alternate sort of cover art on here. Dairaga 15, as you can see there, representing the 15 vehicles and then you get all of the photos and so on on the back and it does look pretty damn awesome uh, and straight off on some of the posability that you see there it uh, it's definitely more sturdy um, and more articulated than the miracle productions version uh, unfortunately i don't have that miracle productions version to do a side-by-side -side comparison as soon as this was announced uh, earlier this year I put that up for sale and uh, it sold pretty quickly too, uh, surprisingly. Um, and uh, people were looking uh, for that piece to sort of uh, complete their Voltron collection and all the variants. Um, and I think uh, most people who got that version will end up getting this version as well. But um, I'll just go through all the accessories before I get onto each of the uh, crew members. All right, just like with GX71, it comes with a display stand for all the accessories. Um, you just put these two blue pieces um, and these ones at the back and connect it up um, and then all the accessories have their spot. Um, all the hands can go underneath but I haven't uh, put them in there just to quickly show you that. But uh, the sword here looks really nicely done. The chroming is very clean. There's no sort of markings or um, scratches or anything like that on mine. It's a pretty massive sword. I think it's even bigger than the uh, Lion Force Voltron, um, but uh, I'll have a look when I get it all together, um, but I uh, do love the size of that. Uh, it comes with two lances, a short one here and a long one. Um, and I think all the hands that they have, you can manage to get all of these in. Um, and again, that does look very nice. I probably won't display these at all. Um, I'll definitely be using the sword. Um, this thing... At the back is some sort of um, magnetic whip thing. I think you just uh, take that off. Uh, so that's a, a nice translucent effect there. And then it comes with this sort of um, shooting arrow thing. If I can actually get it off. 
Um, it comes with this uh, sort of um, wire here. So it is coated in what looks to be like a, a string type material, but it's actually wired. Um, so you can get it uh, posed fairly decently. Uh, but again, I can't actually even remember this in a cartoon, to be honest. Uh, but it does look pretty good. It's got uh, not chrome this time, but uh, that's a sort of a metallic silver paint. So it's not too bad. I wish uh, they had gone chrome with it, but uh, I guess there must have been some sort of reason for them not to do that. Uh, comes with all of these uh, rotary pieces uh, that you can put on his shoulders or uh, on the helicopters. Um, I'll probably be using the larger ones. Oh, I think the larger ones are more appropriate for when they're in the uh, the helicopter separate modes. But on the uh, figure itself, on the shoulders, I'm not sure if the larger ones or the smaller ones fit better. It's probably the larger ones on the on the bot mode. Uh, but either way, uh, again, they're nicely chromed. Uh, you get uh, one for each side that you can attach there, and then you get the pretty much the corresponding blue versions. If I can unpeg them they are a little bit tight just be careful you don't snap anything when you're doing that so you get that i think these are the ones that he can uh, hold in his hands i think so they can be either sort of style um, so that's a, a nice option if you want to display it like that uh, it does come with a couple of other pieces uh, i'm not quite sure how you use this particular piece yet or if it's some other sort of weapon um, but I thought it was uh, going to attach to uh, the uh, the number one uh, uh, head, but uh, so I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see what happens uh, with that through the instructions. And then it comes with this little piece. I think fits on the back of the head uh, to swap out so that it doesn't look so bad um, in bot mode. Um, all the hands comes with all the different poses, so you can. Uh, there's even sort of pegs in there, so you can hold the uh, the spinning things like something like that which looks pretty cool. Um, you've got the sort of splayed out hands and you've got the hands to hold the sword, etc. Um, and of course you get it on both sides in two different colors um, and it looks pretty nice. I like that the, they've given you quite uh, a few options to, to go with. Um, and the hands, as I was saying before, you can flip them out and I think they just sort of peg in something like that. So you can store them away underneath um, and out of the way. Um, but that's pretty much the stand. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, it comes with, just like the, uh, the GoLine uh, GX71, it comes with a couple of uh, different variants for face plates. And this is the traditional Japanese Dairaga 15, but I'll go with the uh, English Voltron. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'll go through each uh, team now and give you guys a closer look at those. All right, so here is the air team, and as uh, you have a closer look, you can definitely see and feel the Solar Jagokan quality uh, over the original. I'm just going by memory, but I did have a quick look at my previous review myself, just to compare what uh, these originally had with the uh, Miracle Productions version. I'm definitely happy that, uh, for the most part, it doesn't have any of those uh, particular issues. Uh, the Miracle Productions had issues opening uh, the face part, uh, but this one doesn't have that at all. And uh, overall, I think uh, this particular version, Bandai, um, has definitely gone for a far more accurate uh, paint application um, and style to the original cartoon. Uh, one thing you'll do, you will need when you, you play around with this particular figure, uh, it'll be good if you actually have some fingernails uh, of some length. Uh, I've got uh, not too, too long, uh, but my kids uh, have quite long fingernails playing their guitars. Um, and they, uh, they help me pull out some of these wheels. Um, but uh, as you can see, it's got a nice metallic blue paint application. Love the red at the front here. Um, so this is the uh, Command Jet Explorer. So there's that. There's the weapons module here. Um, now I don't think the original Miracle Productions version had this bit that uh, lifts up. So on the side here, you just pull those up together. There is a warning about uh, this being delicate, so just be careful there. Uh, but uh, that looks pretty cool, and you can just uh, fold these out, so these just fold away on the side. Now the tires here, I don't think they... They are rubber, and you could probably move them if you force them, maybe? No, maybe not. It doesn't feel like they move. I remember the Miracle Productions versions certainly moved, uh, but at least they went with uh, rubber wheels uh, for that extra bit of quality. Uh, overall, the paint application is really nice too. The This whole sort of blue part, uh, you can feel the, the sort of coldness of the die cast. 
Um, and as always with Bandai, they only put the die cast where they uh, really need it most uh, for strength or for stability. Most of these other parts here are all plastic, uh, which uh, I'm okay with. There's that, there's the two helicopters. So they've got the small rotary wings on there at the moment. They spin really well. Um, and there's no sort of risk of them coming off and you just uh, sort of pull them off. So um, there's the, the friction joint there is uh, actually really good. Um, so you just push that down like that and uh, it spins uh, really nicely. Uh, the red paint is nice and uh, solid. No paint bleeding or anything like that, which is good. And again, uh, just get your fingernails ready for getting these wheels and so on out. So that's the red one. Of course, you then have the blue one. I remember having uh, an issue with the original Miracles production version where they gave me two of the uh, same helicopter, so they had to send me out another one. Uh, but uh, this one, uh, there was no issues with that from Bandai. And this one is actually all blue. I think uh, the Miracle had uh, a red nose for some reason. Um, and again, uh, looks uh, pretty good. The Falcon Jet Fighter looks uh, nice. The, uh, I do actually prefer the original Miracles version where there was an actual magnet um, and it just uh, hooked on in bot mode uh, via the magnet. So it uh, was uh, really easy to just take it on and off uh, without any sort of risk of um, paint damage. I think you flip something out here when uh, we get to the bot mode uh, to add it on. Uh, so hopefully that uh, doesn't result in any damage. But uh, overall, the paint application itself is uh, really nice. And I think uh, this whole part section here is, is die cast. So it's uh, pretty good. Uh, but I'll get it into the combined mode uh, for the air team. Hold on. All right, so here is the combined air team. And it all comes together fairly straightforward um, and no issues. Uh, this... I guess the only tricky part, um, probably the only part to be aware of, is how you connect this uh, jet fighter to the front here. So you do fold out a couple of pieces and you just need to make sure that when you clip it on, you clip it on from the back and then fold it forward and clip it on at the front as you can see right there. So I don't think it's going to leave any sort of uh, red plastic marks or anything um, that I was worried about, but uh, just be aware of that. Uh, the head here goes into that part. There is a red button on top you press just to make it a little bit easier um, and then you can insert that um, pretty easily and I think that's just the release mechanism as well when you want to take it out uh, but that's uh, pretty much it um, it was far easier than uh, what I remember from the Miracle Productions version um, so I'm glad that's uh, no issue on this one uh, but that's uh, the air team I'll get on to the C team next all right so here is the C team and this is probably where I had the most problems with the Miracle Productions figure uh, but uh, for the most part, I can't find any major issues with the GX88 here. Here's number six with the comms module, I think. Uh, you just uh, fold this part out. So this uh, sort of whole assembly uh, folds down. Uh, you just uh, unclip it like that. So just be careful. You need to fold that uh, antenna piece down first. And you've got these little side pieces. But you pretty much just uh, clip it out like that. Um, and that's what it looks like. Again... The chroming on the grills here, or the fans, and the paint application is all really nicely done and clean. The space probers, I think that's what they're called, um, they come fairly well defined, no major issues. I think the uh, Miracle Productions one had some different coloured uh, plastic for the uh, the visors or whatever they're called, the, the windscreens. Uh, but uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. There's no wheels or anything like that. Um, the biggest problem I had with these with the Miracle Productions figures was um, how they attach to the rest of the body, uh, getting it into bot mode. You had to sort of press some sort of spring mechanism and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this one seems to have the little holes there um, and these metal pieces. So I think uh, for the most part, once we get to the formation, uh, I think these will be much easier. The multi-wheeled explorers here. Again, these have the rubber, and I think these are the ones that uh, might roll. So yes, these are the ones that roll fairly, fairly easily. I wouldn't uh, probably play around with them too much like that, but uh, it's good that they've got that feature. Again, the chroming just on that grill piece there is really nice. This is probably one of the heaviest pieces in the in the set because this whole 
uh, main body is die cast just like it was on the Miracles figure. Uh, I do love that they've got these extra details in the antennas and so on that are nicely chromed as well. So beautiful piece there. And similarly for this yellow one, which has the two separate pieces that you attach that are chromed. Um, and these are all on really nice firm ratchets. So I think uh, the overall design of these is uh, better than the Miracle Productions. I remember the Miracle had some sort of sliding metal panel piece that uh, really didn't uh, work that well and uh, was getting in the way for the most part for, for when I was uh, playing around with it. Uh, but for this one it looks uh, really nice and clean design. So now I'll get them into their combined mode. Alright, so here is the C team and again it does come together fairly easily. Probably a little bit more difficult than the air team. Uh, when you rotate these ratchet joints and you fold out the uh, the roof panel, just be careful that you need to pull out the joint, uh, the hinge a little bit, uh, just so you can fold it down on the double joint. Um, when you insert these, it is a little bit tricky and, and similar to the MA-01 um, version, you do need to press these buttons at the top here just to make it a little bit easier to insert um, and clip into place. So once you do that, it's uh, not too bad. Um, I think that were the only two points uh, that I thought I would point out. But uh, again, when you've got them combined like that, it does look pretty good. All right, so here is the ground team uh, with this particular module here. I can't actually remember the Miracles version having this flip out piece with, um, I'm assuming the antenna and stuff like that. Uh, the Miracles one had a silver door that just wouldn't close properly on mine. I had to almost put a bit of sticky tape on the inside to get it to fold down and stay in place in bot mode. Uh, but this one doesn't have any of those issues. It's got the yellow cartoon accurate front panel there and uh, everything else seems to be pretty good. These are not rubber on this one. These are just uh, fake wheels on there, but uh, that's not uh, too big a deal. The cars on the side, I do wish uh, the front bumper here wasn't so large. They've done that on both. And I'm not sure if uh, that's meant to be for stability or or what. Uh, but uh, in car mode, it doesn't look that great. Uh, the Miracles one, I think, had a cleaner look. Uh, but I think, um, I guess it's just down to compromises, right? Because this particular wheel design, you push them back in to get the wheels out of the way. I think from memory, the Miracles, uh, initially, there, there were problems with uh, in bot mode where the wheels were still touching the ground. And so it, the, the figure would just sort of roll away. But I think you could pull out a piece or change a piece on the inside to, to lift it up um, out of the way uh, so it didn't roll. Uh, but this one has a better mechanism and you just push the wheels in and then you push the wheels uh, inside uh, further in into the body um, so it stops it rolling. Uh, the paint application is uh, pretty good. Nice glossy black and chroming on the front grille and wheels with the yellow one here, uh, same thing. It's a shame that this wasn't sort of painted or anything like that. Uh, to give it a cleaner look on the top, but uh, I guess that's just a minor nit to pick there. And then the two arms come with the wheels. You can sort of fold those wheels away. I mean, I think you can, uh, these are the hands, the default hands, and you can just pull these out and change them into the hands to hold the swords and so on. So again, pretty good paint application. I think most of these are, for these two, I think they're all plastic. I can't feel any die cast anywhere on these two particular pieces um, but I guess that's not too big a deal so I'll just uh, get these combined as well all right so here is the combined ground team um, and they do look pretty good the connections are all pretty straightforward um, I remember the top part of the miracles figure was an absolute pain in the ass to connect um, it had the that sort of weird piece that also allowed the ankle articulation um, and getting that attached to all of the other pieces was uh, quite painful uh, but this one uh, you pretty much just flip out that little piece that I was pointing out before on on the yellow car I um, mean you just peg it in and then these hands here you just uh, peg in the back piece right into a slot on the top um, and it all comes together uh, quite easily uh, so overall it looks uh, pretty good and uh, rolls fairly well too and stays like that so um, overall a pretty good design there by Bandai but of course now the thing that I've been waiting for is uh, the comb combined bot mode to one. Let's get that started. All right, so here it is fully combined and I have to say it was a far more enjoyable experience than the Miracle Productions version where uh, I hurt my fingers and I probably uh, swore far more than I probably should have. 
Uh, this one is uh, far more natural looking in its uh, articulation and uh, posture. Uh, so I definitely love that. Um, articulation wise, uh, I'll go through that in, uh, in a little bit. Uh, when you uh, put this thing together, just be careful to uh, pull the head up a little bit uh, to give it a bit of a neck joint. Um, and it just makes articulating the head a little bit easier um, and give it a bit of range of motion in the neck. Um, otherwise, it's just pushed all the way down. So you just lift it up a little bit. Uh, be careful in how you flip out these hip pieces. Um, I do love the fact that uh, Bandai have the full die cast pieces uh, inside there um, that uh, connect everything together. So you just sort of open up these panels and flip out the uh, thick metal joints uh, that all combine together and they slot in uh, really easily. Uh, this mechanism at the knees here is similar to um, how you combine them in their C mode. Uh, you just push these buttons in um, and insert them in and uh, it goes in fairly easily. I love the ankle joints. I'm not sure if you can I just lift up, I probably won't bother lifting up. There's a metal uh, joint right underneath that you slide in and then you uh, just make sure you pull those out as well uh, to give that extra range of motion in the ankles. Um, so I do love the ankle rocking motion there. And uh, when you put it together, it does have the flat feet. So it doesn't, uh, there's no risk of it rolling off anywhere. Uh, anything else in the arms? Uh, the arms, putting in the forearms in, just be careful of the the fins of the uh, helicopters, but uh, once you get in there, it's uh, not that big of an issue. And I do like the elbow, not the elbow, the uh, wrist joints. You can pull them out uh, to give that uh, extra range of motion in the, oh, you can probably just see it there. If I just turn that around, you can see the internal mechanism there. So just be sure you uh, pull that out, um, otherwise it's all inserted all the way in. Just pull it out and you get that extra range of motion in the wrist and so on. And you can sort of see it to splay out like that. Um, I've already changed over the hands to the sword holding hands. Uh, but uh, you get the idea, you could have lots of different options. Uh, and this one's the sort of splayed action sort of hand. Now with the articulation, I just showed you the head before. The arms, uh, you do have that uh, shoulder joint where you can sort of, um, it's almost butterfly out like so. So you can, I think you might even be able to get him into a pose where he's holding the sword straight up in the middle. Uh, that might be a bit tricky to do, but uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do and post up some photos on the uh, the Facebook page. So you've got that shoulder articulation there. They're on the nice soft ratchets on here that uh, move fairly well. The elbows are on a double joint so you get the top joint uh, right there but then you also get uh, a slight uh, lower elbow or top of the forearm joint uh, which is pretty nice as well um, the knees oh if I just go down to the hips here the hips do move quite a, you might have to move up these panels to uh, move forward but um uh, I won't probably get it into too many dynamic poses like that uh, you can rotate the waist out which I've just done for that more natural pose and you can flip out these panels there and swing out the legs to the side. Um, I might just uh, do that now actually, just to give you a look at the uh, joint inside there. I'm not sure if you can really make out the, the thick, dark metal joint there. So it's a big piece of uh, die cast metal there, which is nice for stability. Um, and then of course the, the knees bend um, just at that joint here as well, uh, down, down here. And then you get the, the, the ankle articulation. So overall, uh, they've done a fantastic job with um, the design. Um, all the joints of stress are all die cast, uh, which is, um, I guess, the, the Bandai's forte, um, in making that uh, stability in these figures. And I think it does look pretty awesome overall. So I might just uh, get his sword in hand and uh, get the uh, go line out here and uh, give you guys a final comparison. All right, so here are GX88 Vehicle Voltron on the left and GX71 Line Force Voltron on the right, and they do look sensational together. I'm so glad that um, Bandai finally released both versions of Voltron um, out for collectors. Uh, for myself, I spent uh, a lot of weekends and uh, afternoon, Saturday, uh, school afternoons watching the cartoon, um, so it's great to finally have these in the collection along with my other classic 80s cartoon stuff. Um, so. 
Hopefully you like that look at this uh, new GX88. Um, if you can't get a hold of it from the Japanese retailers, I'd probably look at Big Bad Toy Store and anyone else from the US that might have it in. Um, if you've got the one on the right, uh, the one on the left is definitely a must have, I think. Uh, they go well uh, beautifully together on the in the display cabinet um, and I'll definitely um, have them displayed up soon. I'll uh, take a few more photos, so hopefully you can check out the Cool Collectibles uh, Facebook page for some of the photos that I'll put up shortly. Um, that's pretty much it for the rest of the year, I think. Um, I do have one more thing coming um, uh, from Japan just after Christmas, and that is the MP47 uh, Transformers Masterpiece Hound. So hopefully you can uh, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but until then, uh, thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Bye.